No holiday coming. What's going on? Oh. Um, I am um, going to go on the summer holiday in a week's time. So I'm very excited about that because we have just finished all the exams at school and um, the kids are very tired and I am tired as well. I was on, um, on a trip with the kids and our flights got cancelled. So we were stuck in the airport for about nine hours, which was not fun at all. I was, it was initially supposed to be a two hour delay, and then it was a nine hour delay. And it was very tiring. We had 50 students who were so, so tired. <laughs> Do you do any school trips? No. No. Do you, do you never go anywhere um, in another city with your school? No. Not really. Okay, that's a shame because it's usually quite fun. And you get to know each other a little better. We... Um, we went to a place that had lots of activities. We did um, paintballing. You know what paintball is? No? Let me show you while we wait for um, singing. Paintballing is um, it's like a sport, a team sport. And you get a gun with, um, with, filled with, with balloons of paint and then you try to shoot someone from the other team and you get to shoot them with paint. And then you see it on the, on the arms or in wherever you manage to shoot them, you see the colors flash and that means they're dead and they're out of the team. And you carry on until you shoot everybody in the enemy's team. Let me show you a video. Um, I, I teach in an all boys school, so it's more, I guess it's a more boys thing, but I, well, I'm a girl and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, in England, lots of people do this for birthday parties and um, just activities during the summer to have fun. Let me see if I can find it. I'll find a video about it. Hello, singing. Oh, yeah. Can you hear us? I don't know if you can hear us. Oh, yes. Yeah, how are you? Are you okay? Yes. Yeah? I was just um, telling Tan that um, I was on a trip and um, the flights got cancelled and we were stuck in the airport for nine hours with 50 students who were tired and hungry. And um, I was telling her that we, um, we went to a place that had paintball. Have you ever played paintball? No. No? Oh, let me share my screen to show you what I mean. This is paintballing. So the people dress like um, like military, like soldiers, and they have these guns with paint. And when you when you shoot someone from the other team, they get splashes of color like this. It's quite fun. You need to run a lot. And sometimes the, the paint actually hurts. When, it, when the bubble of paint breaks on your skin, it really hurts. <laughs> but it's fun. Right, so let's start. I understand you got to unit seven with a, with a cover teacher. Is that correct? Yeah, 
Okay. Well, before we, we go on with um, Unit 7, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you, where in the world would you like to spend your summers? If you could choose any country in the world, where would you choose and why? Have a little chat between you two to see what you would say. Right, I can give you an example. I would choose south of France because I'm, I used to live there and it's really hot in the summer and it's very nice and it has um, nice beaches and I love the food. Think about the countries that you learned in geography. Think about maybe places you've seen in movies that you thought are really cool. Let's see. What do you think, Simeon? What would be the most amazing place to live in the summer? Uh, it can be Malaysia, it can be where you live. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe Malaysia. Yeah, whereabouts in Malaysia? Where, whereabouts? Okay, why? Why do you choose that? Uh, because Penang has as many beaches. Yeah. Right. Is it are they sandy beaches or are they with, with pebbles and stones? Sandy. Sandy. Very nice. What about you, Tan? Where would you like to live in the summer? Uh, also Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm, because the, um, the weather is suitable for me. Mm. In, in what way? What's the weather like in Malaysia right now, for example? Mm, now, a bit rain. A bit rainy, but what's, what's the perfect weather in Malaysia for you? Mm, sunny. Sunny. Hot or not so hot? Mm, not so hot. Mm. Do you prefer summers or winters in Malaysia? Winter. Winter. Okay. What about you, Singen? Do you prefer summers or winters in Malaysia? Winter. Winter. So do you both like um, sunny? So what was the weather like in Malaysia in winter? I've never been in winter in Malaysia. Um. A bit hot. A bit hot. Like how many degrees? Is it winter now in, in Malaysia? Is it is it winter now? Yes, a bit rain. A bit of rain. And how many degrees? For example, in, in London right now, and it's summer. In London, it's summer, and it's sunny with 17 degrees. What's winter like in Malaysia?
How many? Can you look up on Google how many degrees are outside? Oh, I think we lost singing. Thirty-four degrees. Thirty-four degrees, and that's winter in Malaysia. I think that's perfect. That is fantastic. It, Thirty-four degrees Celsius. Yeah, I think I like that. And when it's summer, does it get really, really hot then? Does it get to fifty degrees? Does, does it get to 50 degrees in the summer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I think we've decided. I think the, that weather is for me as well. And I think it would be perfect in, in the winter for me. Um, right. Now, let's open the textbook. I'm going to share my screen with you. Let's see. Okay. So we are on page 62 of the textbook, and we are looking at these four images. There's one, two, three, four images. We need to work in pairs, and we need to match the words in the box to the photos. So we've got cold, foggy, freezing, frost, hot, ice, icy, um, Lightning, rainy, showers, snowy, storm, sun and sunshine, thunderstorm and windy. Okay, so which words, what words would you match to picture number one, the one with the, the people having a coffee? What would you say singing? Sunny. Definitely sunny, yeah. Hot, maybe, yeah. Sunshine. Sunshine. Excellent. Well done. And Tan, what would you say for number two? The girls in the forest or in the park. Foggy. Foggy, yeah. Maybe windy? Could it be windy? Could be. Maybe a bit cold. They're wearing jackets, so that would tell us that it's a bit cold. Yeah. What about number three singing? Uh, cold. Uh -huh. Freezing. Uh -huh. Snowy. Uh -huh. Does it ever get this cold in Malaysia? Does it ever snow? No. Uh -uh. So you haven't you haven't ever experienced snow? No. No? Okay, well you're gonna have to come come to well in England it doesn't snow that much either. But in Europe, in Austria, in Germany, um, in France, there's a lot of snow. And lots of people from England um, actually go in, in the winter. They go to, um, to the Alps and, do, uh, and they go skiing there. I think it's, it's something that when you experience it for the first time, it's really scary because it's really cold. Um, but it's fun. If you, if you like skiing, then it's going to be really fun. Um, what about picture number four, Tan? Lightning. Lightning. Thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. Storm. Storm. Yeah, excellent. Okay, now let's have a little think about how do you think people experience, experiencing this weather feel? 
So I'm going to describe one of these people and I want you to guess who, which picture it is. So I'm reading out the, the example. They probably feel quite cold and they might not be able to see well through the fog. What photo is that? Second photo. The second photo, easy. Okay, now, Tan, I want you to describe how you think people feel in one of the photos and sing in this to guess which photo it is. The sky was dark and have lightning. But you didn't say how the people were feeling, how the people were experiencing it. Some people will feel scared. Uh -huh. Some people would feel scared. So singing, can you guess which one it is? The fourth version. Yeah. Okay. Now it's your turn to describe how people feel. Try to avoid using the words describing the weather this time and say about how people feel. So it would make it harder for time to guess. Um, some people will. It felt very hot. Uh -huh. But some people don't. And some people like this weather. Okay. Time. Picture number one. Picture number one, exactly. Well done. So, um, after after this, I want you to think about about advantages and disadvantages and living in a hot country like yours. What are the advantages of living in Malaysia, where the weather is constantly really quite quite hot? Can you think of any advantages or disadvantages? I mean, one, one advantage that I would have love to have is being able to go to the beach all year round. You can go to the beach in winter which is amazing and you can wait you can wear a t-shirt in the winter it's summer in london and i'm wearing a long sleeve can you think of any other advantages or disadvantages No? Maybe I can see them better. My, I would love to live in a country where it's always hot and I don't have to um, turn the heating on because the heating is very expensive. So I would save up costs if I don't have to pay for the heating. Um, and a disadvantage is as we were talking earlier, the fact that you, you can't go skiing, so there's no winter, there's no snow, so you, you can never experience skiing or snowboarding, for example. What would you say are the advantages of living in a country like the UK? What would you say, Tan? What comes to your mind? 
can swimming outdoor. You can swim outdoor. Um, I mean, right now it's seventeen degrees. I wouldn't go swimming outdoor. Maybe you're braver. But in in Malaysia, yes, you can swim outdoor, right? Yeah. What well, can you think of any others? Sing in, can you think of any others? Would you rather live in Malaysia or in the UK? Malaysia. Malaysia, why? Because Malaysia is sunny. It's always sunny. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about you, Tan? Where would you rather live? Malaysia. Malaysia as well. I mean, do not get me wrong. Don't misunderstand me. The UK's weather is pretty nice as well. The UK is very famous for the rain. In London especially, you never know when it's going to rain. So you always have to have an umbrella with you. But it can be quite romantic when you're waiting in the bus stop and it's raining, it's very nice. When you are reading a book inside and it's raining outside, it's quite, it's quite relaxing, I think. Um, it's not always raining. Sometimes it's really hot. Yesterday, for example, we had sports day at school and it was very hot. It was like, I mean, it wasn't Malaysian hot, but it was hot for the UK standards. Everybody was wearing shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> so it was nice. And sometimes it gets to 35 degrees in the summer. Right, okay. Now, I would like us to have a look at exercise four. And I'm going to try to think what the underlying expressions mean. So let's have a little look at this. The first example, I hope the sun will come out soon. So come out is underlined. And the example is come out means to start shining. Um, singing, can you read the second one? And let's try to think about the, the word. I put on a jumper because it was a bit chilly by the sea. Yeah, what do you think chilly means here? A chilli is a pepper, right? A spicy pepper, but it doesn't mean that. What does chilli mean? Uh, if I had to put on a jumper. Very cold. That's it, excellent. No, well, quite cold, not very cold, but quite cold. Chili is in between warm, cold, and very cold. Yeah, it's just a bit chilly. You need to put a, a jumper on. Okay, time, next one. It is pouring outside, so take your umbrella. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It's pouring outside. Raining. Yeah, it's raining heavily. It's pouring a lot, so the rain is very, very heavy. Mm. Sing in. Open the window. It's swelling in here. Hmm, boiling. What does that mean? It's very hot. Boiling. It's 
when the water boils at how many degrees? Do you know how many de degrees does the water have to be to start boiling? 100. A hundred, so that's a lot. Obviously, when you talk about the weather, you can't really have a hundred degrees Celsius, but it means it's really, really hot. Well done. Uh, Tan, next one. Even in summer, it gets quite nippy at night. Hmm. What could nippy be? A bit cool. A bit cold, yeah, that's a nippy or chilly. It gets a bit nippy, a bit cold. Mm, sing in, next one. It, it was cloudy earlier, but then the weather cleared up. Mm -hmm. What does clear dark mean? Uh, the weather become very uh, hotter. Hotter, yeah. Well, if there was cloudy, the, the weather was full of clouds and then it cleared up, the clouds disappeared. So it got clear or sunny. It cleared up. Very good. And Dan, last one. Because of the soaring temperatures, lots of people have gone to the mountains. Oh. High temperatures. That's it. Extremely high temperatures. Very good. Which of these phrases would you describe the weather right now in Malaysia? Would you say it's boiling? Boiling. It's boiling, okay. Um, I would say it's a bit chilly in England, a bit chilly. Okay, well done girls. We're going to do a listening exercise now. We are going to um, look at exercise two in a minute and we're going to need First of all, to answer the questions. What is the main speaker's name? What is the topic? And what do you need to listen for? Okay. So, um, Tan, can you read the instructions in exercise two for us? Quickly read the instructions and the questions to get an idea of what you will hear. Listen for uh, wait, I think I'm, for exercise two here for each question, this bit. For each question, choose the correct answer. You will hear an interview with a woman called Oliver talking about her experience of traveling through a snowstorm with her friends Grace. Excellent. So what is the main speaker's name then singing? Olivia. Olivia. Olivia is going to be talking. What is the topic of the listening, Tad? The uh, experience of traveling through a snowstorm. Yeah. With her friend. That's it. And then let's see what we need to listen for in order to answer the questions. So when it started to snow heavily, Olivia and Grace were. What were they doing? Were they talking? Were they driving? Were they having a snack? How did Olivia feel as um, heavy snow began to fall? Was she annoyed? Was she sure that the snow would stop soon? Was she scared? Um, why did this, the car stop moving? Was it because of they had run out of petrol? Was the snow too deep? or they had hit another vehicle. Then number four, how did they try to keep warm in the car? 
They put on lots of clothes. They kept the heater on all night. They drank some hot liquids. Uh, number five, they were in the car nearly all night because it became impossible to open the doors. They had been told not to leave it and nobody knew where they were. And in number six, the following day, they traveled to a village in a rescue vehicle. Do you know what a rescue vehicle is? Not sure. A rescue vehicle is when you... When your car breaks down, so you have a flat tire or it's, the engine doesn't work anymore, someone from the insurance company comes with a, with a car to put your car on a platform and to take it away. Yeah, so it moves your car away from there and it rescues you, it helps you, saves you basically. Okay, are we ready for the listening? Okay, let me find. So, share sound. No, one second. Unit seven, listening part four, exercise two. For each question. Choose the correct answer. You will hear an interview with a woman called Olivia talking about her experience of travelling through a snowstorm with her friend Grace. Today I'm talking to Olivia Richardson, who was with a friend on a skiing holiday in central Italy when over two metres of snow fell in 24 hours. Where were you, Olivia, when that happened? Grace and I were near Capricotta in the mountains. There'd already been some light snow and we stopped for a quick meal before carrying on to a crossroads. But there, we took a wrong turning and got completely lost. Then, while we were trying to decide how to return to the main road, some really heavy snow started coming down. Was that frightening? At first, I was quite certain it wouldn't last long. It was March in Italy, so I wasn't worried. Of course, it was rather annoying we'd gone the wrong way, but I couldn't blame Grace because it had been my idea. And we were still moving, but not very fast. When did you have to stop? Well, it was getting quite difficult to see, and we nearly crashed into a parked car. There was more and more snow on the road, so when we tried to go up a steep hill, the wheels started going round really fast, but it was so deep the car just wouldn't move forwards. It looked as if we'd be stuck there, but we didn't have much petrol left, so we switched off the engine. Grace tried to phone for help, but couldn't get through. How did you stay warm? With the car heater? That meant having the engine on, so we only used it a bit. Instead, we got all our jumpers, trousers and socks from our suitcases and wore them all night. We were still frozen, though, and wished we had some coffee or tea with us. So you spent the whole night inside the car? Yes. I'd at last managed to contact the emergency services. They knew our location from my phone, and they advised us to stay in our vehicle until help could be sent the next day. That's what we did. But by then, the snow was starting to cover the car completely, so we cleared a space next to the doors in case we needed to get out. How did you get moving again? The rescue vehicles didn't get there until the afternoon. They'd called to ask if we needed an ambulance, and luckily we didn't. So they just cleared the snow and led us along the road to the nearest village. There, we stopped for an enormous hot meal of roast fish and pasta with cheese, the most delicious I've ever tasted. Was it too fast? So, so? Let's see, let's see what you said. Which letter did you choose for number one singing? Talking when it started to rain to snow heavily, Olivia and Grace were talking about what to do next. Perfect, that's it. 
one A. What did you say for number two, Tan? How did Oliver feel as heavy snow began to fall? C. Scared about what might happen. Hmm. What about you, Simon? Annoyed with Grace for getting lost. Okay, let me let me find it in the script. I have the script in front of you. Let me read out a key phrase from you for you. Um, so how did Olivia feel its heavy snow began to fall? Olivia says this. At first, I was quite certain it wouldn't last long. It was March in Italy, so I wasn't worried, worried. Of course, it was rather annoying we'd gone the wrong way, but I couldn't blame Grace because it's been my idea. And we were still moving, but not very fast. Did that change your mind? So she said, of course, it was rather annoying, but I couldn't blame Grace. So it can't be that she was annoyed with Grace. She found it annoying, but she could not blame it on Grace. So A is out of the question. At first, I was quite certain it wouldn't last long. It was March in Italy, so I wasn't worried, worried. When you, go on, go on, Tan. The answer is B. The answer is B. So, you know, when you're saying an adjective like worried and then you repeat it, that means I wasn't very worried. I wasn't worried, worried. I wasn't very worried. So she was sure that the snow would stop soon. Yeah. And she did say, I was quite certain it wouldn't last long. So she was quite certain that will, it will pass. It will, it will stop soon. All right, 2B. Number three, sing in. Why did the car stop moving? It had run out of petrol. It had run out of petrol? Mm, maybe. What did you write, Han? Also a oh. okay, let me read out what she actually said, and I'll read it very slowly. Maybe you change your mind. Well, it was getting quite difficult to see, and we nearly crashed into a parked car. There was more and more snow on the road, so when we tried to go up a steep hill. The wheels started going round really fast, but it was so deep, the car just wouldn't move forwards. It looked as if we'd be stuck there, but we didn't have much petrol left, so we switched off the engine. Does that change your mind in any way? The snow was too deep. The snow was too deep. It said we didn't have much petrol left. So there was some petrol left. And for them to save the petrol, they turned off the car. But they were trying to go up a hill and the wheels were going down. So they couldn't move forward because of the snow. So that's it. The snow was too deep. Okay, number four, Tan, how did they try to keep warm in the car? Um, see, they drank some hot liquids. Mm. Mm. They did mention coffee and tea. What did you write singing? They kept the heater on all night. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, let me read out what she said. So the interviewer asked, how did you stay warm with the car heater? And Olivia said, that meant having the engine on, so we only used it a bit. Instead, we got all our jumpers, trousers and socks from our suitcase and wore them all night. We were still frozen and wished we had some coffee or tea with us. We wished we had coffee or tea. They didn't have any of that, so they it can't be seen. And then she said, that meant having the engine on, so we only used it a bit. They didn't keep the engine on all night because they didn't have enough petrol to do that. So B is out of the question as well. They kept the heat on all night, impossible. So what's the only one left, Anne? They put on lots of clothes. They put on lots of clothes. Jumpers and socks and trousers. Okay, number five. They were in the car nearly all night because, singing. Because they had been told not to leave. That's it. Excellent. So when they called the emergency services, they, uh, they had their location. The emergency people had the location from the phone and said, do not leave your car so they can find them. So they had to stay in the car all night. Okay. Um, the following day, they traveled to a village in what, Tan? Uh, rescue vehicle. Uh, sorry? A rescue vehicle. A rescue vehicle? Um, what about you singing? What did you write? Hmm? Are you frozen? I think we lost singing. I think I think she got frozen. Um, let me read Tan what what they said. How did you get moving again? And Olivia said the rescue vehicles didn't get there until the afternoon. They called to ask if we needed an ambulance, and luckily we didn't. So they just cleared the snow and led us along the road to the nearest village. So. What the rescue vehicle actually did, they came and took away the snow from the road to clear the way so they can drive their own car on the way. Yeah, so it was their own car, the answer. What did you find the, um, the hardest about this listening? Number three. Number three. Mm -hmm. It was quite, it's hard to understand what they were saying. Lots of technical words. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes it would be useful if I had the transcript to show you. Uh, singing, are you there? Um, so we just talked about singing, we just talked about number six. What did you say for number six? Their own car. That's it, excellent. Their own car. Right, perfect, guys. It was quite a, quite a tricky listening. We're just going to need to do a bit more listening practice, I guess. Um, how would you feel if you were in Olivia's situation? What would you do if you were stuck in Italy, a country that you don't really know, and there's a lot of snow and your car gets stuck? What would you do, singing? Uh, find someone to help. Find someone to help. Excellent. And you, Tan, what would you do? 
and also find someone to talk. Yeah, I think that's the most sensible, sensible thing to do. Well done. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Where you got stuck or you got lost somewhere? Have you been tan? No. Not really. What about you singing? No. No. Okay, well, that's good. If it ever happens, make sure that wherever you are in a foreign country or your own country, make sure that you know the emergency service number or that you, you find someone to help you. Right, we are going to move on now to a little bit of grammar. And we are going to talk about adverbs of degree. Now, you know what adjectives are? right adjectives are describing words for example pretty hot sunny um and so on now adverbs of degree are words that you use near adjectives to show the intensity of that adjective for example let's let's take the adjective hot yeah to show how hot it is you need to use different adverbs of degree so you can say extremely hot that's boiling hot or fairly hot which is somewhere in the middle weak weaker than extremely quite hot oh it's rather hot it's still quite weak really hot, that still means very hot, and you know very because it's the most common one. Yeah, so that's what these, these words are doing, extremely, fairly, quite, rather, really, and very are just helping us, one, to give a bit more complexity to your speaking or your writing, and to show people how intense the adjective is. So let's read the sentences and then try to complete the rules in the box. Um, Tan, can you read the first two rules and sing in, read the second two? Oh, sorry, not the rules, the first two sentences. Really heavy snow started coming down. Uh -huh. Next one. I was quite certain it would not last long. It was rather annoying. We were done the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It was getting quite difficult to see. Brilliant. Now, you have these words, extremely, fairly, um, oops, sorry, quite, rather, really, and very. You need to fill in the gaps with one of the correct ones. I'll give you two minutes to fill in these gaps, and then we'll check what you wrote. Okay, let's see. Uh, sing it. Which words? Just read out what you wrote, please. Adverbs of degree such as very, extremely, and really always make an adjective stronger. 
Perfect. So the missing word was really excellent. Tan. The adverbs fairly and rather always make it because. Very good. Yeah, fairly and rather. And the last one, last one singing. The adverb quite usually makes it weaker, but adjectives like sure, true, and different, it can mean completely. That's it. So quite makes an adjective. It's quite hot, so it's not very hot. But if you put it quite sure, I'm quite sure about this. It actually means I'm completely sure about this. I'm, it's quite true. It's quite true what I'm telling you. It's absolutely true. And um, no, no, you're not right. It's quite different from what you're saying. It's when you say quite different, it's actually completely different. Okay. Now I'm going to turn to page 130 where we can practice a little bit these adjectives, uh, adverbs, sorry, 130, there you go. So these are the rules that we've just talked about extremely, fairly, quite, rather, really, and very. I'm just going to go through it for, for you. We can use extremely, really, and very to make adjectives and adverbs stronger. We've had an extremely busy day, for example. I'm going to stay inside today. It's going to be really hot. It was so warm, they were walking very slowly. Then we can use fairly and rather to make adjectives and adverbs weaker. They mean not very. I think you'll pass the exam fairly easy. I'm rather disappointed I failed the exam, but I'm not surprised. So I'm quite disappointed. I'm, I'm not extremely um, happy about it. Quite has two opposite meanings. It either means completely with gradable adjectives, and not very, with non-gradable adjectives. For example, I've been working hard, so I'm quite tired. So I am a bit tired. I'm quite exhausted after running a marathon yesterday. And this here means I am extremely, I'm completely exhausted. Okay, now I'm going to give you five minutes to put the words in exercise one in the correct order to make correct sentences. Do you have this page in your book? Yeah, okay, so you can write on your book.
Okay, finished. No, bring in and still writing. Uh, I left the last question. Yeah, okay. Well, let's, let's have a look and maybe we can do it together. Uh, Tan, what did you write for the first one? I was really cold because I had forgotten my coat. That's it. I'm going to type it out in case, in case someone missed it. I was really cold because the cause... I have forgotten my coat. Excellent time. Um, singing, number two. Mia is sure her exam will pass fairly. Ooh, I see. Um, it's a good way of saying it. However, you want to use fairly as an adverb of degree. So you want to put it next to the adjective. Where is the adjective in the sentence? Mia is sure she will pass, she will fairly pass her exam. Almost. Tell me, tell me which one is the adjective, first of all. What word is that? Hmm? Fairly. Uh, that's the adverb of degree. So that's the word that you need to put next to the adjective. What is the describing word? Do you know, Tan? Sure. That's it. So singing, you need to put fairly next to sure. So it means quite sure. Can you try again? Mia is fairly sure she will pass her exam. Perfect. That's it. Mia is fairly sure she will pass her exam. Very good. Number three, Tan. The traffic is moving very slowly. Perfect. Very slowly. And uh, number four, in be, be extreme extremely careful when you cross the, the busy roads very good excellent when you cross the busy road busy road without the when you cross busy roads and last one uh, did you do it tan yes mm -hmm. that was a rather difficult question very good, excellent. That was a rather difficult question. Okay. Right. How about we take a 10 minute break and then we'll do a bit more practice with this, uh, these adverbs of degree. Okay, we'll, we'll, I'll find a game so we can practice it a little bit. All right, I'll give you 10 minutes. Let's be back here at 10 past.
Hello, I'm back. Okay, girls, so let's resume. Let me share my screen again with you. And on the same page, we have another grammar um, point. We have the words to and enough. And we use these words with adjectives or adverbs. So for example, to plus an adjective and an adverb, and I'm reading over here, can tell us that something is more than is needed or wanted or allowed. For example, Anna is too young to drive. So it's younger than, than necessary. Hurry up, you're walking too slowly. It's too slow for the pace that I need you to walk at. Other examples can be with to plus an adjective or an adverb and for someone and an infinitive. So this exercise is too difficult for me to do. They were talking too quickly for me to understand. And then you can have too much and uh, an uncountable food, for example, an uncountable noun like food or rice or homework. You've made too much food. You've got too much homework. There is too much rain. And with countable nouns, you have instead of much, you have too many. We've got too many books. We've got too many siblings. We've got too many people and so on. Okay, and the same thing goes with for someone and an infinitive. There are too many books for me to read. Okay, now with these rules in front of you, um, I want you, actually, let, let's just read the second part of the rules. Can you read the rule on enough? Um, so we use enough to say that there is or isn't as much as is needed. For example, you have the adjective or adverb first, then you put enough or not enough, and an infinitive. And as old enough to drive, we're not running fast enough to win. Um, so enough in this context has to come after the adjective. And it goes the same way when you need to have a, an infinitive and for someone. That car isn't big enough for us all to get in. And then you can write it with enough chairs or with a noun. Okay, I think enough talk about the, the rules and more actual use. Can you please complete the sentences in exercise two with either enough or two? And one of the words in the box, big, good, ours, ill, money, and rich. I'll give you five minutes.
finished? Not yet? I'll give you some more time. Finish. Okay. All right. Have you finished singing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the book. Um, there you go. Right, number one, Tan. Jen staying at home today. She is too ill to go to work. Excellent, too ill. Uh, sing it. I couldn't believe I won the lottery. It was enough good to be true. Almost. Yeah, it was too good to be true. So I almost didn't believe it because it was so good. It was so good. I was just like, it can't be this good. It was too good to be true. This is an actual phrase that we use a lot. Oh, it's too good to be true. I don't believe it. It's too good to be true. Number three, Tani. Ben's grown so quickly. His shoes aren't big enough for him now. Excellent, big enough. So remember that enough comes after the adjective. Number four, sing in. I'm really, I'm really busy. There aren't two hours in the day. Mm, you could say there aren't too many hours in the day. But that's not the correct answer here. It's there aren't enough hours. In this, in this example, hours is a noun. It's not an adjective. So it's not a describing word. So enough is like in this rule here, enough chairs. There aren't enough chairs. There aren't enough hours in the day. And uh, last one, Tan. I wish I had enough money for that car, but I know I will never be too rich to buy one. Yeah, um, enough money for that car. I know I'll never be too rich. Too rich means too, too rich is having too much money. Now, there's a better way of saying it here. I know I'll never be... Rich enough. Rich enough. That's it. Okay. Now let's play a game. Uh, share them with these two words. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Right, so we're going to play a close activity where you have to choose the correct answer. I would like two bigger cakes. These are singing. These are too small. Very good, too small. All right. Can uh, do the next one. You can't wear these shoes, they aren't big enough. Excellent, they aren't big enough. Very good. Mm, sing in. You can buy PlayStation oh. 5. It is too expensive. Very good. Can? The room wasn't warm enough, so I turned the heating on. Very good. Sing in. You can't, have, you can't have a tiger as a pet. It is too dangerous. 
I would love a tiger as a pet. Like a big cat. Uh, this one, uh, Tan? I can't buy this shampoo. It isn't cheap too. It isn't cheap enough. So it's too expensive. It isn't cheap enough. So I can't afford to buy this shampoo because I don't have the money. Yeah, it's too expensive. It's not cheap enough. Sing in. There were too many questions to answer, so I only did three. Very good. Uh, Tan? I haven't got enough time to take a holiday this year. Very good. Uh, sing in. I didn't buy the jacket because it was too big. Very good. And the last one, Tan? Excuse me, my tea isn't hot enough. That's it. Very good. Excellent. All right. So is it a bit more clear how to use to and enough? Yeah. Okay. Now let's have a look. Let's see if I can find um, a worksheet on um, adverbs of degree. That's what I want. Because I feel that we need a bit more practice with those adverbs of degree. Dun, dun, dun. I think this one is a good one. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so this one is, is the same as uh, with two and enough. How about you do this one while I look for a better one with the, um, with the other uh, adverbs that we learned. So let me just send you the link here and you do it separately on your own. Okay, so you need to fill in the gaps with either two, enough or very.
Let me know when you finish. Okay. Can you have you finished as well? Well, yeah. Okay. While we wait for singing to finish, oh, almost. Tani, do you want to have a go and write um, in the chat box in a private message what you think uh, is the correct word for these answers? Okay, right, so singing is finished as well. Girls, can we just stop um, telling what you're doing and go to the um, worksheet that you were just doing? And can we read the answers? Let's see if we both had the same answers. Um, singing, can you read the first one? Is bass jumping? Is bass jumping shrilling enough for you? Very good. Um, next one, Tan. I, I think scuba diving is very exciting. You can see a whole new world underwater. Excellent. Sing in. Connor had to give up climbing to the top as the road was too difficult. Too difficult. Very good. Tan. Couldn't you have just worn a black wetsuit? This is too colorful. <laughs> Excellent. Sing in. Some people seek rivers with too rough currents to go white water rafting. Uh, this one is not too. Tan, what did you write? Very. Mm, current is a wave, so it's a noun. Rough current is like big waves. So people look for rivers with enough big waves to allow them to do water rafting, white water rafting. Do you know what white, enough. Do you know what white water rafting is? Not really. Let's let's have a look. I want to show you a photo. So I think that's what made it confused. Why water rafting? It's basically like canoeing. Let me show you. A little bit like canoeing. There you go. You see, that's white water rafting. People want a river that's quite um 
violent so they can have an, an intense experience. Okay, number six, uh, Tan. The instructor says it's time to head up to the surface as our tanks may not have enough oxygen. Very good, enough oxygen. Sing in. Change Mary's life jacket. It's too small for her. She needs one that fits her nicely. Excellent, too small for her. Uh, eight, ten. You need to be brave enough if you want to try paragliding. Paragliding. Well, brave enough. Do you know what paragliding is? That's lots of extreme sports. Let me Google paragliding for you. This is paragliding. Look at this. So you, you are seated in like a chair, basically. And then you jump from a cliff and you have to have good wind so you can fly with this banana looking um, thing. And you can fly over mountains, you can fly over sea. And then you guide with the strings, you guide the direction that you want to go in. And you have other strings that will help you stop when you when you stop on the on on the beach, maybe. I would never try it. I'd be too scared. Would you try it, Anne? No. No. What about you singing? Are you braver? No. No. Okay. Um, sing in. Do number nine first. Tommy is not old enough to try rock, rock climbing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the last one, Tan. I am too excited to sleep. I keep thinking about going bungee jumping tomorrow. Very good. Excellent job. Very, very good. Okay. So we had a bit of practice with two and enough, and I think you're mastering this. I'm going to turn back now to the other worksheet where we need to use some of these adverbs as we agree. So you need to choose between the ones in brackets. For example, I'll do the first one. This book is very interesting. Or in in this context, utterly, utterly is more than very, utterly compelling. It's a bit too much to use utterly in this example. You can't really say this book is utterly interesting. It just doesn't sound right. So this book is very interesting works. Um, what would you say for the phrase with my brother, Tan? My brother is extremely talented. Very good. My brother is extremely talented. And singing. The sunset was really pretty. Very good. The sunset was really pretty. Um, next one, Tan. This TV show is not very exciting. Not very excellent. Uh, sing in. I'm feeling slightly unwell. Yeah, when you're not feeling quite well, slightly unwell. That's a good choice, slightly unwell. I am feeling slightly unwell today. You see, I can't breathe very well. My voice sounds weird because of that. Tan. I am not particularly happy about this. Very good. I'm not particularly happy about this. Very good. Sing in. 
Your uh, your answers were perfectly correct. Yeah, excellent. Perfectly correct. You can't say fairly correct. Correct is already very definite. So it's either correct or incorrect. So you can't just say, oh, fairly correct. That doesn't work. It's perfectly correct. Very good singing. Tan? The weather is almost perfect. Almost perfect. Very good. Almost perfect. And last one, uh, singing. I've nearly finished my work. Yeah, I've nearly finished. I've almost finished my work. Yeah, you know, when I ask, have you finished? And you're saying almost, you can say, I've nearly finished my work. Very good, girls. Very, very good. Okay, I think it's time for us to go back to the book. And where is the book? Page six. Page 60, I believe. 60 or 60. 64 we're on now, page 64. Go to page 64 now. Okay, so for page 64, we have a little bit more practice with two and enough. And I think we know the rules now, we don't need to go through them anymore. What we need to do is have a look at exercise two. Exam candidates often make mistakes with two in and out. Some of the sentences contain mistakes. Let's see which ones are the mistakes and how we can correct them. I'll give you girls four minutes to do it. Some of them are correct. Okay, are you nearly finished? Okay, right, the first sentence is correct. It was hot enough to spend the whole day in the water. So we didn't need to do anything about this one. Number two, what is incorrect about it? Singing. Uh, I think this is correct. Um, in the streets, there are too much cars. Do you agree, Tan? Yes. Yeah, well, it's not correct. Have a look at the rules. In particular, rule number three. Any ideas? There are too many cars. There are too many. So cars, it's a countable word. You can count one car, two cars, three cars, four cars. It's not like food or rice, one, one food, two foods. You can't do that. Now, if it was food, you would have said too much food. 
But if it's something that you can count, you need to replace it with many, too many cards. Okay. Uh, number three, Tan. My sister is very young to travel alone. Mm -hmm. very young. That, yeah. What did you change? Change to two. Mm -hmm. My sister is too young to travel alone. Very good. Number four, singing. I can't hear you. You're, you're muted. In summer, it will be it will be hot enough to cycle. Yeah, um, you can say that it'd be hot enough to cycle. I think both of them work. It would be too hot to cycle, so it can be too hot and you don't want to cycle, or you can say it would be hot enough. So it put number four. I think it's correct actually, but we don't know exactly what they wanted to say. But either either of the options are correct. Uh, what about number five, Tan? We did not have plenty of time to see the University of Cambridge. Plenty hmm. of time. Yeah. And how would you change it? Change to enough. Enough time. Yeah. We did not have enough time. Very good. And the last one thing in? I think you are, I think you are old enough to spend this summer with your friends mm -hmm. i think you are old enough so you change the order enough and old swap together very good okay now let's have a look at exercise one i want you to look quickly at the signs and messages below and then what i want you to do is to match the text, match the notices to the phrases in exercise two. For example, C, the city centre airport bus service, goes with one to give you information. So the purpose of the text. Okay, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to match them up. Yeah. Okay, so number two, to say what you must not do, which sign, what letter goes with number two, Tan? E. E, very good, that's E. Number three, to warn you of something, sing in. A, A excellent, danger, that's a warning. To say um, what you must do, Tan. B. B, leave, go, run. Yeah, that's it. So leave bicycles in parking spaces. And to advertise something, sing in. D. D, fantastic. Sign up, you'll get extra credit. That's advertising. Now, where would you find these um signs for example the one with danger thin ice deep water i would say you can find it next to a lake in the winter yeah where would you find any of the others tan
Singing, any ideas? Oh. Do any of the ones that you, you know. The last one on the roof. Yeah. Where, where would you find it? Roof. On the route, on the road, you said, on the road. Yes. Yeah, that's right, on the road. So you can find it in the street, on the road, excellent. Any others? The cyclist one, maybe you find it on a, um, on a ferry, because it says, leave bicycles in parking spaces provided on ferry. So you're already on a ferry, and it tells you where to put your bike. What about the city center airport bus service? Where, where would you see that sign? Airport. Uh, in the airport, yeah, or on the actual bus that goes to the airport, yeah. Perfect. And the sign up for new phone contract, where would you find that? No idea? I would say that one you would find in um, on your phone. You know, sometimes you get a text message saying, oh, if you want, you can get a new contract and you can get extra credit. Right, okay. Now boys, boys, girls, sorry. I teach in a boys school, so I'm used to boys. <laughs> girls, what I want you to do for homework is find five signs in Malaysian so signs that you would see in Malaysia. So I want you to Google signs. And I want you to do a project on a, on a PowerPoint with the sign in Malaysian and then the translation, your translation of that sign. So I'm not going to understand, understand the Malaysian sign, but I'm curious to see what kind of signs there are and what they look like. And I, then I want you to tell me what it means. I want you to translate it for me. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, so for example, let me just give you an example with a sign in um, French, because I also teach French. So French signs, let's see. Okay. I found a sign. I'll show you the. Okay, can you see this one on the on the side? Avis, pas de nourriture, ni de breuvage passer ses pontes. The, the on the right. So you don't know what that means. I would put it on my PowerPoint, and on the side I would say, notice. No food or drinks past this point. That's what it means. Okay, so this is probably a sign that you would find at a concert or at um, like a classical music concert, I mean, where you're allowed to have drinks in the lobby, but you're not allowed to go further with your drinks and your food. Okay. So I'm going to create now on our uh, Google Classroom, I'm going to create the, um, the assignment and you will have to, um, you will have to write on that PowerPoint your, your ideas. So five signs, not more, not less. Let me just create it now.
assignment five signs road signs Okay, and it's due for next week. Okay, can you check on Google Classroom to see if you can see the assignment? And tell me if it works. Um, so again, can you check if you can see the assignment and if it works? Mm, yes. Yeah, is it is it there? Yes. Yeah. Tan, did you were you able to open it? Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, girls. I think this is the end of the lesson. We're going to finish two minutes earlier. And um I will see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye bye.